What's going on everybody? For today's weird video, I'm going to show you some secrets, easter eggs, glitches, and creepiness in Zelda The Ocarina of Time and Zelda Majora's Mask. Now, there are tons of others that are more difficult that I haven't covered, and I also didn't cover the infamous fourth day glitch because I've already made a whole video about it. Also, one thing to note, I'm actually not using an emulator on this. I'm doing this all on the original cartridge, so none of this is a mod or save state or alteration or anything like that. So, to begin, we're going to start, of course, with the first, Ocarina of Time. The first little reference is a really common one, probably seen it before, but if you go into Zelda's area in the beginning, you can look through this window and you can see Mario in a picture frame. If we look from a different angle, you can see Yoshi there, and finally if we look at this angle, we can see Bowser and we can see Luigi. Now, on the topic of Mario references, if you look at the pendant worn by Milan or Talon, you can see that it's actually Bowser's face, which is pretty interesting. Uh, you can only see it on Milan when she moves her hands because she's usually singing, but whatever. Next one we have is obviously at nighttime, lots of the Skulltalus pop up, right? Well, what you can do is you can sit here and just keep killing them over and over and over and eventually a large oversized Skulltula, or sorry Skulltula, Skull Kid will pop up out of the ground as you can see right here. I don't know what the significance is but it happens if you just keep killing them. So this next one I need to credit Sindamos and Jay the Ham for finding and Ultramaster BDJ for uploading the video. If you take, yeah, this is real what you're looking at right now. If you take a game shark and delve deep enough into the catacombs of Ocarina of Time's game files, you will find that there is an R wing straight out of Star Fox. <laughs> this is crazy. In the game, I'm not making this up. You can see it here flying around and shooting lasers at you. It's just so, it's just crazy to see something like this in a medieval fantasy game like Zelda. This futuristic spaceship, and it's not even to scale, it's like this tiny little toy spaceship just flying around shooting lasers. Here's the best part, boom, crash. Alright, so this next one takes a little bit of work, but it's totally worth it. So what you're going to want to do is get to the end of the game and wait until you fight Ganon for the second time in his last form, right here. Now, if you remember, whenever you get into this fight, Ganon gets really, really, really pissed off at you and you swing, he swings the sword at you, you try to block it and he knocks the Master Sword out of your hand. Well, that's not just a cutscene, that's really happening. You no longer have the Master Sword. So here's what you're going to want to do. Once the Master Sword has been knocked out of your hand and this cutscene is over, you're going to want to pause the game and then unpause it and save. Now, after you've saved the game, you're going to want to reset and reload the file that you did this on. Bit of a warning here, don't save again or you'll screw up your whole game. So we're going to reload it and you'll notice now that you don't have the Master Sword on the B button. So you're probably wondering, oh well, that's not that cool, what's the significance? Well here we go, call your horse Apana up and get on and equip some interesting C items such as the hook shot. I'll do the Megaton Hammer and some bombs for now. Okay, and don't save. Don't forget, do not save or you're going to screw up your game. So hop on your horse and you'll be riding around like normal, but you're going to notice if you press one of those C button items, yeah, see, you can actually use it while you're riding the horse, which is pretty interesting. 
Here I have the Megaton hammer pulled out. Sadly can't use it while I'm on her, but you can still pull it out. And let's just try a let's try a bomb now. Let's see here. Let me get another shot of the hammer. Alright, bomb. <laughs> Looks hilarious just riding around holding this flashing bomb above your head. But where things start to get really, really interesting is if we equip Din's fire and we use it while we're riding on the horse. So watch what happens when you use it. The animation starts and the horse just kind of runs from out between your legs and keeps on running. But we're still technically mounted. So the horse is just off running around like a zombie and you're still technically on it. And if we try and mount, look at this shit. You fall through the ground and pop just up through the ground. Let's do this again. Off the horse, here goes the fire, and now we're floating in the air. What the hell is going on? Now, here's the most significant and fun part. Hop on your horse, go to the lake, and shoot your hook shot at the fence. And you'll see that it just stays attached, and you can like swivel around with your chain just attached to the fence, right? Well, where it gets really fun is when you hop off the horse, you start hovering as if you're in constant motion of flying towards the fence and we're just gonna start hovering out you know over the lake and wow this is fucking glitched up beyond belief I love how his feet are just skimming across the water like that it looks hilarious and I'm gonna stretch this chain to its limits here and just see how far out we can go even when you go underwater it doesn't cancel it out you just keep on going just keep trucking so I made it all the way across the lake and we're still going but that's that glitch now we're gonna move on to Majora's Mask so first thing that's pretty cool is once you have all your masks if you look at the mask the way they have them lined up this is actually a pretty interesting game reference to Star Fox again. We have a fox mask, a bird mask, a rabbit mask, a frog mask, and a pig mask. Now what does that make you think of? Yeah, that's right, Star Fox. It's the exact same lineup. Very clever and well played. So, for the next one, this is a pretty simple common one again, it's another Mario reference. If you walk into the clock tower, and we'll put on the Zora mask to make ourselves a little bit taller, so that the camera angle will be a little bit better here. But we'll put on the Zora mask, and we'll go up to the creepy mask salesman and zoom in. We can see a mask that looks just like Mario's face on his pack. Um, it's pretty common, I'm sure you've seen it before, but there it is. So, if we go on the first day out to the courtyard where the bomber kid is shooting at the balloon, we see Sakon, Sakon, I don't know what his name is, but he's creepy as hell. Look at those pointed shoes, what a freak. And if we talk to him, he says, I'm not doing anything suspicious. Really? Yeah, sure. If you wait till midnight, the old lady from the bomb shop comes out with her bag of bomb bags on her back and here comes Saken just hopping along and pow! He hits the old lady and steals her shit. And if you shoot him with an arrow rather than hitting him with your sword, he blows up and dies. I can't fathom that you're able to kill another human in a Zelda game. In fact, it's the only time in a Zelda game you ever really get to kill a person. Alright. For the next one, put on your Zora mask and go to any body of water. Now this one's cool, and I'm about to show you why. Hold down R to make your energy shield. While holding it, take your mask off and watch what happens. The whole game becomes dark and misty and just straight up creepy. I call this glitch the instant creepypasta glitch because if you ever wanted to make any kind of creepypasta video about Zelda, you just do this glitch and boom, 
everything is just instantly creepy looking. I mean, look, your field of vision is decreased, the whole world is just darkened. It's terrible. And it's really easy to fix this glitch. Just swing your sword a couple of times and uh, everything goes back to normal. Pretty weird. Alright, for this one, if we walk into the swordsman's training school, you'll see that there's no possible way to jump up on this ledge, no matter how hard you try. And even if you try and backflip onto it, you just can't get up on the ledge, right? Well, if you wait till the final countdown when the world's about to end and you walk into the swordsman's training school, the first thing you'll notice is he's gone and there's a sign in his place. But, if you run up, you can now jump up on the ledge. And his sign says, I'll be on vacation for a short while, please don't look for me. Well, this is kind of cool, but what's really interesting, if you go to this board back here and slash your sword at it, you can actually chop it in half. And if you walk back here, not only are there a few jars of money for a decent amount, but you'll see him cowering in the corner back here. And it's really interesting to see him from a back angle with his weird hair. It's almost hair. It's almost like he's sitting in a hair teepee or something. And he says, I'm scared. I can't take it. I don't want to die. All right. For this one, pretty simple. Get your great fairy sword and talk to a mailbox. Try and deposit the great fairy sword. And they'll say, I can't accept it. Sorry. But now your great fairy sword is invisible. Not only does this look funny when you're killing enemies with it, but if you block with it, you can make yourself look pretty stupid like this. Alright, this one's really weird. Apparently, someone with a Japanese version got real deep into the files with the Game Shark, and there are some hidden and unused cutscenes. This one depicts Link training with the Great Fairy. Uh. <laughs> It's just one of the strangest things I've seen, partially because they took so much time to put that kind of animation into Link's character, and then they just decided to not even utilize it. And then at the end, you drop down into the Great Very Fountain, and you're the fierce deity, and the camera angle stays the same. I don't know what it says, because I guess I'm assuming it's in Japanese. Now, there's a second unused cutscene as well, which is just as strange. Basically, what this is supposed to represent is the Great Fairy teaching Link how to do the spin maneuver and how to hold his arm, but it just ends up looking sexual. Alright guys, for the final oddity, I'm going to show you how to access a hidden cutscene here. So as soon as the game boots, quickly press start and go to options then quickly press B twice to get back to the main area. If you do that quickly enough, it should just bring up the mask spinning towards the screen again, right? However, instead of it being the normal opening sequence that we're used to, we are given a hidden alternate opening sequence, and it's uh, pretty interesting to watch. I'll let you guys watch it here.
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little compilation of Zelda oddities. And I hope you see you here back next time when I release my next oddity video.